Okay, so I'm just going to give you a quick tutorial on sketching out an application with PowerPoint. First thing is first, you want to make the screen as big as possible so you get a better view for detail and just so you can be more accurate. So if your speaker's notes are open, you want to close these so that the screen can extend down. And also if you've got spare room around the sides of the screen here, Actually, you may as well go ahead and full screen PowerPoint. Secondly, it's important to turn the grid on so you can get an idea for the proportional size of things, symmetry, and that sort of thing. So most of you will start on the Home tab here. If you go to View and click on Grid Lines, then you get these dotted lines which will help you just have a better idea of spacing and symmetry. So now we're going to do a quick bit on auto shapes. And to get to auto shapes, you go to the home tab, and right here you've got a selection of shapes. So for our application interface, we're going to use these shapes just to kind of sketch out what we're talking about. So obviously squares will be one of the main ones, squares and rectangles. So that could be the top kind of header bit. You could put in other little squares to symbolize kind of buttons on this. If you want to copy and paste this quickly, if you hold down control and go C, V, you now have another one there. And you can press control and V again to paste. So now we have a header and three buttons, and that's quite simple. For things like circles, circles are usually quite hard to get completely right. Circles, they'll usually end up being some type of oval. However, if you hold down shift and then try and drag out a circle, it only allows you to make a perfect circle, even if you tried to make a oval. So, as you can see, there's a bit of a difference here between a perfect circle and an oval. One shape that's usually quite useful and you see a lot in websites is the rounded box. So here's the rounded box. This little yellow button here, if you drag it one way or the other, allows you to blunt on the corners or make them a little bit sharper like this. So these are a few of the shapes that we're going to need to sketch stuff out. So one thing you might need to, to use is sending things backward or forward. So let's say you have these two buttons drawn out, but you decide that you'd actually like a background box to them too. What you do is you draw the box that you want, like so. You right click on it, and in the menu here, we have the option to send to the back. So now that is sent to the back, and these two things come to the front again. Alternatively, if you wanted to make this come to the front for some reason, you do the exact opposite. You click, right click here, and just bring it to the front. So, a while back I did a few samples for the idea of bismetrics that we were toying around with and this was all done in PowerPoint and this is the kind of thing that we're aiming to do but obviously we, we don't need all these kind of fancy shadowy effects and the colors aren't so important yet we just want to get across the main concepts but everything you see here are uh, separate elements all auto shapes with different levels of layering. These are lines and all the rest. So this was the second page of the website. If you clicked through you got to the kind of the cafe specific page. So here we have auto shapes. Each one of these is a square. These are arrows. This is a kind of a semicircle thing going on here. This is a rounded box. So you can achieve it quite a bit with just auto shapes. So I'm just going to show you a very simple uh, example of that. So let's say we wanted to make something that looked more like this. Not the hardest thing in the world. So start a new slide, get rid of all of this. So first we want the header. I'm going to click on the rectangle and just drag that out. Now we want those buttons, so we're going to make smaller rectangles. And as I said before, if you click on it, hold down Control, press C and V, you can have these easily copied and pasted. 
let's paste on another one, control V. These are our three buttons. Now if we want the rounded boxes, that's simple enough. Drag out our rounded box. Use the little yellow thing here to drag it out. Control C V to copy and paste. And there's our two boxes. One thing to be conscious of is that the zero here denotes the middle line. So when we're plotting things out, we want to make sure just to to make to keep in mind that this is the middle line of the screen. So we want to make these two kind of as equidistant from the middle as possible. Now if we want to put a circle on, we click on the circle up here, hold down shift and drag out a perfect circle. Uh, if we want the arrow as shown here, we click on the arrow, drag it out, and that's about right. As you might notice, this circle is a little bit off center from the box. So if we hold down shift and click on the circle and the box, go to arrange, then go to align, and align center, this will bring it completely uh, in line with each other. So now if we want our boxes down here, we just simply click these out, drag them out, control C V to copy and paste, and let's bring him across. In this example here, I have the word click written inside the box. What some people do is they go up here, click on a text box, write what they want, that'll do, kick, kick, and then they drag it into the middle. The better option is to click on the auto shape and just start typing, as that will automatically put it in the right place. I think that's about everything for now. Uh, if you need any more help, just send me a mail on Gmail and I'll try my best. See you later, guys.